Good evening and welcome to Bethsaida Baptist Church. We just want to, we're going to give everybody just a few minutes to get online and we will get started in just a few minutes. So hang on and we'll get started with our Bible study tonight. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night online Bible study. Let me just give you a few announcements as we get started. Uh, due to our situation with coronavirus and everything, we are encouraging you to give online. And if you can't give online, you can uh, stop by the church and uh, drop off a check. Or you can text and they've got slides showing you what you need to do. Also, as far as life group lessons, uh, if we don't meet for life group, uh, we're still going to send those out uh, through email, or you can drop by the office and get one printed up. And then also don't forget, you've already got your reading plans, adults and students, you've got your book, 
And then parents, don't forget you've got your children's book, and especially since they're out of school right now, and you've got a few minutes maybe, you can go through these lessons with them. And so don't forget to stay in the Word, read in the Word, and uh, encourage one another uh, through this time. As far as our Sunday services coming up, uh, we will let you know by Friday uh, what decision we make, and we will let you know through our one call and through Facebook, and so we will let you know uh, what's going to take place uh, as we go through some of these different times uh, with this coronavirus and what's going on in our nation uh, and in our country. And so we do want to have a time of prayer, and um, I do want to say this, if you do have any comments or any questions, uh, please comment there on uh, Facebook, and uh, we'll hit those at the end. Uh, if you do have any prayer requests, send those in, or you're like, hey, man, this is a private request, uh, email me or Kristen, or just call the office tomorrow and let Kristen know, because uh, we do want to be praying for one another, caring for one another, uh, also encourage you to call those shut-ins and elderly people uh, that you know and check in on them in the, uh, in the days ahead. And so let's just have a time of prayer and uh, really go to the Lord in prayer and really pray uh, for our situation that we have going on and praying for families and most of all our nation. Uh, we do want to pray for our president and all those involved from uh, in our medical uh, fields and the doctors and the nurses. Uh, we just want to pray for all of those uh, tonight and lift those up uh, to the Lord in prayer and pray that his hand would be upon those. Uh, again, as we said Sunday, we don't have to fear uh, as children of God. God's in control. We just got to cast all our cares upon him, as First Peter 5 says, because he cares for us. Proverbs 15 9 says this the prayer of the upright is his delight. And hopefully, even through this tragedy, we might spend more time in prayer and calling on the name of the Lord and asking him to move and work. And so let's uh, just re remember that that God is in control. And ultimately, uh, we do want to pray that lives will be changed by the gospel through all of this, that people would contemplate eternity contemplate where they will uh, uh, be in heaven or will they not be in heaven and miss out on all the great things of heaven and be in hell and so let's pray for that and also I'll be preaching this Sunday actually I'll be preaching on the rapture and be preaching on uh, the church being called home and will you be part of that rapture and so we do want to pray uh, for the God to just really move and really work. And so uh, let's just have a time of prayer. I'm just going to lead us, and let's just really pray uh, for our country and lives and family. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you, and Lord, we ask uh, just in your mercy and your grace uh, that you would just stop this pandemic. Uh, we pray that you'd save lives. Lord, we pray for those that have been infected. Lord, we pray that they would get over it, uh, that they would resume life uh, as normal. Lord, we do pray that you would just be with our uh, president and all of our leaders here, government leaders, uh, all those uh, in the medical field, our emergency people, all those helping uh, with police, and uh, Lord, just give them wisdom, Lord. Many of them are working around the clock. Many of them are having to make tough decisions, and so, Lord, we just pray that you would protect them, and, and Lord, your word tells us to pray for our leaders, and so, Lord, we just pray for them. Lord, we pray that your hand would be upon them, that you would minister to them, and that your grace would be upon them, and Lord, we pray that you would just help us to walk in wisdom. Lord, we need your wisdom. Lord, apart from you, we can do absolutely nothing. So, Lord, we ask for wisdom as individuals. We ask for wisdom as families. We ask for wisdom as churches. We ask for wisdom as a nation, Lord, and ultimately a world that we might seek you, Lord. 
And so, Lord, we ask also as we prayed Sunday that you would just protect our missionaries. Some of those missionaries are in tough parts of the world, and, and some of them are in areas where this virus is really spreading. And so, Lord, we pray for, uh, that you would protect them and their families. But, Lord, again, we also pray that the gospel might spread like a virus. And, Lord, many people's lives might be changed. Lord, we pray, um, again, for those on our prayer list here at Bethsaida. We pray for those that are sick. Uh, they may not have this virus, but they may have crud or pneumonia or some other things, or they've just come out of surgery. Lord, we pray for your hand to be upon each one in our body. Lord, may you minister to them as only you can because you're Jehovah Rapha. You are the God that heals and that nothing, you can do whatever you want to, Lord. And so, Lord, we are grateful for that. And so, Lord, we're just grateful that you love us. Lord, we're grateful that you'll never leave us. You're not going to turn us aside, kick us to the curb, but you truly do love us. And, Lord, we do thank you for that. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for eternal life. And, Lord, we do thank you for your watch care. We thank you for your provision, protection, and another day that you've given us to experience grace and mercy and love. Again, we do thank you for just another beautiful today to see your handiwork in the creation. And so, Lord, we again just pray for our other sister churches in this area. We pray that you would watch over and protect them. Uh, just be with them and guide their leaders as they make decisions. And again, Lord, we just pray um, that through this bad, you would bring out good. Lord, we pray that you might bring out an awakening and bring out a revival uh, that might radically change lives for all eternity. So, Lord, we just uh, lift up uh, this service to you tonight. It might be different for people being online, but, Lord, we just pray we'd have a great time together as we open up your word and we just worship you and we praise you for all that you've said and all that you've done and all that you will do. Uh, in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tonight, Brother Stephen is going to lead us in one song, and then we'll get to our Bible study. I want to just thank you for joining us tonight, wherever you might be. I don't know if you're with your family, with your kids, maybe you're sitting on a couch or watching on your phone, but we hope tonight is a great time of encouragement, a time of teaching as well. Um, and we ask you to join us in worship, maybe sing along with us. We'll have the lyrics on the screen for you. Um, but also join us in study. Uh, open up your Bible with us. Maybe take some notes as Brad is speaking. Maybe leave a comment. Talk to the others that are in the chat. Maybe um, just to give an encouragement, maybe something you learned tonight or something that just encouraged you. Uh, leave a like and maybe even share this post for others. And so what I want to do is I want to share a verse for you out of Psalms 34, 1 through 4, that says this, that I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Another way to read that is his praise will continually be in my mouth. Verse 2 says, I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Verse 3, proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, verse 4, and he answered me and rescued me from all my fears. And if we're being honest with our reality, most often in times like this, a hard times and tough situations, we don't have that attitude of Psalms 34. We don't choose to praise God and worship God. Our perspective only looks at how bad things are. And often we don't want to worship God because we don't feel like it. In times like these, we can often think that we don't feel like God is good because we're uncertain of what's going on. We can't see God's praises, and maybe we're having a hard time finding something to praise God for. But when those moments arrive, we have to reach down past our emotions, past our intellect, and choose to praise. Feelings shouldn't lead the way for us. We need to choose to praise, and when we want to praise, those emotions follow, and it will change us. That doesn't mean everything will stop, but instead there are perspective changes and we see things differently. We see a God who cares about us. We see a God who's created us, a God who's made a way for us. 
and we can choose to praise and see Jesus even when we don't want to. So sing along with us. Yes, I will. All God's people said, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Love that one line in that song. One of those lines, there's a lot in that song, but one of those lines is, God won't fail me now. Praise God. And even in the midst of all of what we're going through, God won't fail me now. And so, with the coronavirus and all the uh, sickness going on, uh, around our world and around our country, I thought I would talk about something healthy. And so tonight I want to talk to you about a healthy church. Um, if you're going along with our readings, what we're doing on Wednesday night, we've got, we're reading through the New Testament, we've got one chapter a day to read, five chapters throughout the week. And what we're doing on Wednesday night, I'm taking one of those chapters and we're just kind of looking at our passage in one of those chapters, and we're looking at that. So to, today our chapter to read for Wednesday would have been 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And so what we want to look at tonight is verses 14 through 22. 
because the first 11 verses we take a long time to look at because it's dealing with the day of the Lord and Sunday I'm going to preach on the rapture anyway. So, but I want to talk about a healthy church in 1 Thessalonians 5 or 6. So open up your Bibles or look on the screen there and let's just see what God's Word says. And we exhort you, he says, what, brothers and sisters, he says, and warn those who are idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone. But always pursue what is good for one another and for all. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the Spirit. Don't despise prophecies. But test all things. Hold on to what is good and stay away from every kind of evil. Now, in this text, there are 14, 14 present tense imperatives. They're commands. You say, what's that? It's like you parents giving a command to your, your children or one of your child, uh, saying, hey, take out the trash. Go clean up your room right now. Those are commands and you expect them to do them right now. These commands in this text tonight, 14 of them we're going to look at, and we're not going to spend five minutes on each, but 14 commands, they're all present tense commands, which means that's something you and I must do every single day. We're commanded to live these out. And so the truth that I want you to get tonight as we expound on this, is a healthy church is identified by healthy Christ followers. Healthy Christ followers. A healthy church is identified by healthy Christ followers. Now, Paul in this text, I'm going to break it up into two areas uh, because I believe he's talking about two areas that you and I need to have healthy uh, relationships and so, number one, we're going to break it down and, and look at this. So, the, the first area that we need to focus on health is, is we need to value healthy relationships with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Because he says here uh, in verse 14, he says, and, what, and we exhort you, brothers and sisters. He's saying, man, we encourage you here. But he's, again, pretty simple to understand. He's talking about Christ followers here. And how we need to value our relationships uh, with one another. And he gives us several commands here uh, that we need to focus on if we're going to value our relationships with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let me give you those tonight and let's look at those. Number one is this, confront the irresponsible. Now he didn't waste any time here. He says confront uh, or warn those who are idle. These people are disorderly. Maybe these people are uh, undisciplined. Uh, they're insubordinate. Uh, maybe they're playing with sin. The picture actually here is a soldier who steps out of line and behaves in a disorderly manner. Paul is simply saying if there's any member that you know, any brother or sister that's kind of playing off in sin and they're in ungodly behavior, you know what's going to happen? It's going to threaten the unity. It's going to threaten the integrity of the church. And you need to love that brother and sister and you need to confront them in a loving way and say, hey, what's going on here? Because of a healthy church, you're going to do that. An unhealthy church is a picture of 1 Corinthians and how they had one man in gross immorality and they weren't confronting it and paul told them that they needed to confront it and so number one we need to confront the irresponsible number two we need to comfort the discouraged comfort the discouraged and i think that's what we need to do today especially in this time that we're going through with this chinese virus or whatever it is uh, there are many people that are discouraged. There's many people that are fearful. There are many people that are frightened. They've not seen anything like this. I mean, I've been in ministry um, a little time now. And 28 years, and I've dealt with churches with hurricanes and tornadoes and floods and ice storms. 
and snow, but we've not seen anything like this warfare through a virus that we can't see and it's impacting our people. And so what do we need to do? We need to encourage one another. We need to pray for one another. See, the, the, as one of those verses um, Stephen shared, I've sought the Lord and he heard me and he what? He delivered me from all my fears. See, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of mankind is a snare, but the one who trusts in the Lord is protected. See, our God is big enough to take care of us through this. All we need to do, as we said Sunday, is have some spirit-filled common sense and we'll be okay. But if you're discouraged and you know people uh, in the church are discouraged, you need to comfort them. You need to encourage them. God's God's still in control. God's not going to fail us now. God didn't say, hey, I didn't know this coronavirus was coming. It didn't catch him by surprise. And so we need to comfort those. And say, all right, God's got this. Trust in him. Number three, we need to care for the weak. We need to care for the weak. And so what we've been trying to do around here, the staff has just called and, and touched base with our elderly and our shut-in, and, and I encourage you to do the same thing. Some of those in your life group, your Sunday school, hey, you don't know what's going on in life? Call them, check on them. Maybe you got people at work you're concerned about, call them, check on them, say, hey, what's going on? Now, I think here in the text, he's talking more spiritually weak, but we need to care for our people that are weak right now, the elderly, the shut-ins, those that need help. And let me just say this, if you find out somebody needs help and you can't help take care of it, you need to call, call us in the office or get a hold of us or get a hold of one of the deacons so we can help take care of whatever the person needs. If they just need, they don't want to go to the store and they need something, you need to let us know, and we can help. That's what we're here for. We're, we're the body of Christ. We're the family of God. We're to care for one another. And so if you know of instances like that, you need to let us, let us know. So we want to care for the weak, comfort the discouraged. Uh, number D, practice patience with people. Now, that's something we all have to work on. Now, this word here, pra patience, means to have a long fuse. Doesn't mean to blow up easily. Doesn't mean to fight with people over toilet paper at the store. But we're to practice patience. Now, none of us have this down perfect. But if we're going to be spiritually healthy, we've got to practice patience with one another. None of us are perfect. All of us are hopefully growing. If we're not growing and we do need to be confronted with sin, hopefully we can be confront people and help them to start growing. Well, we've got to understand none of us are perfect. We all have shortcomings. <laughs> we're all uh, uh, work under progress. We're under construction. God is at work in us, and we need to understand that with one another in the body of Christ. That's another reason to look at why we've been looking at the spiritual gifts on Sunday night is because uh, so we can understand where people are gifted and how uh, we can work alongside one another and understand, oh, that's why they're that way. They're gifted that way. And so practice patience with people. Next, E would be refuse to retaliate. Now, patience is hard. And then Paul goes ahead and deals with this one. <laughs> And we live in a culture that wants to retaliate. They talked about me, so I'm going to talk about them. They talk smack, I'll talk smack. They said something bad about me on social media, I'm going to say something bad about them on social media. But in the body of Christ, we've got to refuse to retaliate. And if we're going to have a healthy church, we've got to refuse to do that. And then F. We've got to pursue what is good for one another and for all. We've got to focus on what is good for the group. 
is what he said. We've got to pursue that. This means you care about just people others than yourself. You care for one another and for the whole group. I thought that was interesting. He says, pursue what is good for one another. And then he says, and for all. He's saying, hey, for everybody in the church, we need to focus on what is good for the whole group. So that means you care about others. You focus on others, which is utmost, and that's what God has called us to do. So for us to have a healthy church, and if we're going to have healthy churches, these first commands he just gave us here, I really think deal with body life and deal with brothers and sisters in Christ, and we got to value those relationships. And unfortunately, tonight, we can't be with one another uh, and we're just trying to be uh, cautious here uh, for the good of the group so we don't spread anything. But again, when we're together, we gotta, we got to value those relationships. Praise the Lord that we are the family, God. Praise the Lord. You and I have relationships in this church. We have relationships in the body of Christ. And then we can call them and touch base with them and, and pray with them or send them a text. And say, hey, would you pray for me? Man, there's nothing like being part of the body of Christ. And there's nothing like valuing those relationships uh, with your brothers and sisters of Christ. So that's the main reason to be in the life group you got relationships. That's the great thing about being part of a D group. You go deeper with people because you have those relationships. So I think first here Paul is saying, hey, let's value these relationships that we're having with our brothers and sisters in Christ. But then he's like, all right, now let's take this thing uh, and let's make it a little bit personal. He says, all right, he says, let's value, second, a healthy relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, all right, now, I want you to have a, a good relationships with your brothers and sisters Christ, but he's saying, all right, now, I want you to have a good relationship with the Lord Jesus. And again, these are commands. I didn't come up with this. These are not suggestions. Uh, uh, you can do these, some of these. Now, some of those have been nice to pick those out of that last one, you know. Uh, I don't mind caring for people, but I don't have patience. That'd be really nice, but that's not what the text said. They were all present tense commands that we got to strive to live out daily as Christ followers. So let me give you, some, I think he's got eight here. So, uh, so give me about five minutes on each one and we'll be done. No, but let's look at these eight imperatives that he gives us. Number one is rejoice con consistently. Rejoice consistently. He says rejoice always and i'm sure some of you are thinking how can we do that with COVID 19 how can we rejoice with a chinese flu and virus and pneumonia and the crud and all the other stuff that we got going on let me say this one thought joy is not something we work on but it's something that we live. Scripture says what? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Our joy is not based upon happiness and circumstances. Okay, there's a big difference. Joy is because the relationship you have in the Lord. Joy is about the worship you have with God and how you want to worship God every day and you want to praise God every day. See, Christ is our example. I'm always amazed at this verse in Hebrews 2. It says, Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. He said, Who for the joy was before him. He's talking about the cross. He did that out of joy because he knew that it was going to purchase salvation for us. See, we experience constant joy when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Again, you see some of the fruit of the Spirit in this text. One of, one of them was patience in a few verses before, but joy is one of the also. Fruit of the Spirit is joy. 
How does that happen from the Holy Spirit working in our lives? But you've got to understand, joy is never generated from your bank account or what's going on outside in the world. It's always from the inside out and how Christ is working in and through you. And so Paul said, man, we've got to rejoice always. Why? Because God's sovereign. God's in control. God loves us. God cares about us. God saved us. God redeemed us. And we can rejoice. Second, he gives us, all right, let's be persistent in prayer. Persistent in prayer. Now he says, pray constantly. Or pray without ceasing. This is the attitude of prayer. What he's saying here is you need to be ready to pray at any time. But Paul's saying just don't pray, as Jesus said, don't pray vain repetition. Say a couple words and you say it over and over, same old thing. Talk with Jesus. See, prayer should be a regular part of our lives. Prayer is a practice to cultivate. See, we've got to spend time in prayer talking with him. Mark Batterson said this, the greatest tragedy in life is prayers that go unanswered because they go unasked. James says, you know, you have not because you ask not. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, and knock. You've got to ask. So we need a spirit of dependency upon the Lord. We've got to pray constantly say all right lord i need you lord we need you in our country we need you in our city we need you in our county we need you in our state we need you in our nation our world did you know out of the approximately 667 recorded prayers in the bible there are about 454 recorded answers so that'll encourage you god will answer prayer what do we need to do keep praying Praying for our country, praying for this virus to be stopped, praying that God would give medical people uh, the wisdom and the knowledge of what to do. Pray knowing that God supernaturally, if he wants to shut it down, he can do that. But pray that God's hand would be upon our lives and our families and our nation. And sometimes, I think C.S. Lewis said this, you need to understand this. Pain is God's megaphone. And God's trying to get the world's attention to let us know there is only one way to get to heaven and there is only one way to live and it's for Jesus Christ. And so we've got to pray that we might wake, people might wake up to the truth. And so we've got to be praying. And we've got to understand As Jeremiah said, you say, man, I'm just concerned and everything I see on the news and I see a bunch of fear mongers and all this, you need to understand. As Jeremiah 32, 17 says, nothing is too difficult for God. So trust God. Be persistent in prayer. Rejoice consistently. Number three, be grateful in attitude. Give thanks in everything, he says. Now, Look at the verse. It says, give thanks in everything. He didn't say give thanks for everything. He didn't say give thanks for the coronavirus. But he says, give thanks in everything. Why? Because God is in control. Ruth Bell Bell Graham said this, We can't always give thanks for everything, but we can always give thanks in everything. And that comes from a grateful attitude. You also got to remember this, folks. There's always going to be pandemics. There's always going to be catastrophes. There's always going to be natural disasters. There's going to be tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes. And all those are going to happen until Jesus comes back. Until there's a new heaven and a new earth. But you got to understand... The one thing I learned from the hurricane, it rains on the just and the unjust. You might be thinking, man, I'm walking with Jesus, I'm doing everything right, and all of a sudden all this is happening. You just need to understand, be grateful, God's got your back. God knows what's going on. Trust Him, rejoice, pray, and give it all to Him. See, gratitude is a thermometer that indicates the state of your spiritual health. There was a Scottish preacher by the name of Alexander White. 
And he always would begin his prayers with gratitude and thanks. And the people were very, his members were very familiar with that. And, and they were like, this one cold, miserable, rainy, damp morning that you get in Scotland. And the people thought, man, he definitely cannot open up the prayer with thanks because it's an awful day. And this is how he prayed. We thank thee, O Lord, that it's not always like this. You just need to understand, it's not always going to be like what we're going through right now. We're going to get through this by the grace of God and the hand of God. And let's just be grateful that it's not always like this. We need to be grateful that God loves us and he's in control. And because of that leads us to the fourth command. We need to be sensitive to the Spirit. Now he says here, don't stifle. Some translations say don't quench the Spirit. Now the word there means to quench or to extinguish as one does with a, uh, to light or extinguish a light or a fire. It's almost like the Holy Spirit is like a fire. He's saying, stop putting out the fire of the Holy Spirit. Stop hindering what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Stop preventing him from his full influence in your life. See, Paul is commanding them, hey, you need to avoid any activity that's thwarting the Spirit's work. So now what, you say, what can hinder the Spirit's work? When you and I have sin and wrong attitudes and we, we don't deal with them, it puts a lid on the Spirit. When we walk in the house of God with the wrong attitudes in our hearts and our lives and we've not dealt with a sin or maybe we've not dealt with sin with a brother or sister in Christ, it puts a lid on the Spirit and quenches the Spirit and God will not move and God will not work. What do we need to do? Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Follow and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. See, sometimes we get so busy, which you may not be as busy now, that we ignore and we stifle the Holy Spirit. We're not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We, we quench the Holy Spirit many times, not even realizing what we're doing. But if we're going to grow in our relationship with the Lord and we value that relationship, we've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit because the minute you gave your life to the the Lord, the Holy Spirit, came and indwelt in you. And so we've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Next, number five, we need to be obedient to the Scriptures. Now he says here, don't despise prophecies. Now what is Paul talking about here? I believe what he's talking about, because you have the gift of prophecy, and he's talking about those that are are. are uh, foretelling they're preaching and they're proclaiming the word i believe what he's saying is don't reject the preached word of god the word despise here means to treat with contempt or to look down on what paul is saying is you need to place a high value on the proclaimed word of god And unfortunately, there's not a high value on the preaching of God's Word today in our country. Unfortunately, there are many, unfortunately, there's a famine of preaching God's Word in our country. Many churches you can go today and you might hear a nice story and a few good illustrations, but you won't hear God's Word. And because of that, you have many people that are literate and do not even know what the Bible is. So what he's saying is you need to be obedient to Scripture. You ought to love the Word. You, you ought to love god's word but y'all don't love hearing god's word proclaimed and hear god's word preached you ought to love hearing god's word taught now what's amazing is he ties these two things together he said now don't despise prophecy he says all right now be obedient to scripture but then he says what i'm going to call next f is exercise careful discernment he says what but test all things now, that word there, test, means you need to examine closely. Now, this is what he's saying. He's saying don't take for granted what you hear from your pastor or anybody you hear preaching and just take it for without making sure it lines up with the Word of God, as I've told you many times. No matter what I'm preaching, you better make sure 
it lines up with the Word of God. And if you listen to anybody on YouTube or Facebook or, or you go to another church and hear someone preach or on TV or whatever, you need to make sure what they're preaching lines up with God's Word. Because if you don't, it will greatly affect your relationship with Christ because you'll start walking in error. And so, yes, we want to love God's Word, and we want to hear all to hear it preached and taught, but we need to make sure what we're hearing lines up with the Word of God. It's being right. The person is rightly dividing the Word of truth. Then G, just hit this one very quickly. He says, hold fast to what is good. Hold fast to what is good. He's saying, hey, embrace whatever is good. Embrace what is good in the Scripture. Apply what is good in the Scripture. And there's a lot of application in this text here. So he's saying, hey, hold fast to it. But in your relationship last, he says, this is the last of the 14 imperatives. He says, abstain from evil completely. He says, stay away. Run from every form of of evil what he's saying is he says you and i we need to examine our life closely and we need to confess sin daily you say why <clears throat> because we're sinners and the flesh is weak and it's decaying and the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it i don't care who you are who you're, whoever's listening tonight, you and I need to abstain from evil completely. Because if we're not careful, sin will creep into our lives. And it will greatly affect our relationship with Jesus. And when our relationship with Jesus is greatly affected, our relationship with our brothers and sisters will not be good. See, Job is an excellent Old Testament example of one who abstained from evil. I don't mean to steal your thunder, Stephen. I know you're going to look at Job, but three times God says that Job was a man who made it a habit of life from turning from evil. See, we need to turn from evil and turn to Jesus. Another example in the Old Testament is Joseph. Amazing man. Potiphar's wife's coming after me. He turns from her lustful uh, trappings and trying to be tempted to sleep with her. And what does he say? Man, I can't do this great sin. I don't want to sin against God. But what's also amazing is he didn't do that sin, but he also abstained from the evil, what? With his brothers. One of the points that we just looked at, one of the imperatives, were refusing to retaliate. It's amazing. Je Joseph did not retaliate against his brothers. He didn't get even. You and I would have gotten even with him. We would have stuck it to him. And so if you're going to value relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to have a daily quiet time. You've got to want to praise him. You've got to want to pray. You've got to be in the word. You've got to engage with his word that's why we give you reading through the bible that's why we give you the helps is so that you'll engage with the word you've got memory verses all of that to help our relationship with the lord and once our relationship is right with god then it can be right with our brothers and sisters in christ but i'm just telling you if your relationship was not right with christ more than likely it will greatly affect your brothers and sisters and you won't be right with them See, the church matters to God, folks. And it should matter to us. Say why? The Father planned the church. The Son purchased the church with His blood. Now the Spirit empowers the church. Paul the Apostle, you see through many of his epistles, prayed for the church. And you know what? We get to participate in that church now. Now, unfortunately, we can't meet tonight. But we're still able to meet online. We're still able to talk to one another. We're still able to send emails. And if you really want to see someone, you can FaceTime them. If you don't know what that is, ask your grandkids or somebody younger. They'll tell you. But we get to, what a privilege to be part of the body of Christ. 
And so I really think Paul is giving these commands at the end of this church at Thessalonica, which we saw was a genuine church. God was working in it, but Paul said, man, I want you to be a healthy church. And you've got to keep doing these things if you're going to be a healthy, genuine church. You've got to put these things into a practice. So imagine, man, what a church would be like if we all lived out these commandments daily. If we loved our brothers and sisters in Christ, if we desired to be with the family of God, if we were devoted to one another. See, each of us got to do our part. And in these times of uncertainty, and it is uncertain, you say, hey, what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know, but I know who's on the throne and I don't have to fear. I just need to keep falling in love with Jesus and I need to love my brothers and sisters in Christ. So what do we need to do? Pull together. Love God and love your brothers and sisters in Christ. And also love those that don't know Jesus Christ. And if God gives you an opportunity in the days and weeks ahead, it might be online. It, who knows where God might give you an opportunity, but you need to understand their only hope in the midst of all this uncertainty is Jesus Christ. And so what does God want our church to be? He wants it to be healthy. What does he want in our lives? He wants us to be healthy. See, a healthy church is identified by healthy Christ followers. How are you are healthy? Focus on your relationship with Jesus and focus on your relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. You have to value those. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this amazing text that you have given us. And it's a challenging text, to be honest, Lord. Many things in this text even challenge me, and many of these things I fall short on and need to work on each and every day. And so, Lord, I pray again for my brothers and sisters in Christ that you would just encourage them, minister to them, pour out favor upon them. Lord, again, we just pray for all of our members, Lord, your hand of protection would be over them. Lord, we pray none of them would um, get sick from this virus. I know many are sick due to the other stuff going around with infections and upper respiratory and flu and pneumonia. Lord, I know we have several that have all of that, Lord. Lord, heal them up. But Lord, protect us all from this virus. And, Lord, we do thank you that you care about us. And, Lord, we just pray knowing that you can do a great and mighty work through this. And, Lord, we pray in the days ahead uh, we're going to come out on the other side of this. And, Lord, we'll look back and see how you moved and how you worked and how you took care of us and how you grew us and molded us into your image. And so, Lord, help us to conform into your image. Help us to be more like you and less like our flesh. Lord, we're grateful, again, for technology that we can do this and put this out. And, Lord, I pray you'd send it to whomever you want it to be sent to. May it be an encouragement. May it be strength. May it just speak in the people's hearts. May you receive the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Did we have any questions or anything? Yes. Yeah. Let me just go over these announcements again one last time, and we'll be dismissed. And um, but just let me just remind you, you can give online. Uh, your life group lessons uh, will come through email on Friday. If you're not getting them through email, um, call Kristen and we'll have that for you. And you can swing by the church and get that. Um, or if you know someone that could get it for you on email, uh, just please let us know. We'll do whatever you can. Don't forget, you've got your readings every day. If you got behind, you can catch up on the weekend, but it's just one chapter a day.
tomorrow we start in Second Thessalonians. Um, yeah, I believe Second Thessalonians, uh, and so we'll be starting there. And then on Sunday, if we have a public service with everybody here, we will let you know by Friday, and we'll put it on Facebook, and you'll get a one call. Also, pray for one another, and again, uh, check on those that are elderly. Check on those uh, that may have health issues, and if there's any way, if you find out there's a way that we can help them, please let us know. That's why we're here. Or call a deacon, call somebody, call somebody in your life group, and join together. And so uh, we hope you all have a great rest of the night. Uh, we'll be talking to you in the days ahead. If you need anything uh, or have any questions, email us, call us at the office. We are at the office. Uh, we're in the office uh, Christian will be here tomorrow, 10 to 4, and she'll be here s Friday, 9 to 3. So if you have questions, Stephen's here, and I'm in and out. We're in and out of the office. So if you need something, have a question, please call us. We love you. God bless you. Have a great night. May God's hand be upon you, and may he pour out his favor on you. And we'll see you down the road. And if not, we'll see you Sunday, whether live or online. If we do not have live services, we will do the same thing like this. But we'll let you know, and may God's hand be upon you. Thank you all.